in Canada, Montreal Stadium is the scene of one of the war's most colorful ceremonies. The first public presentation of wings to officers and men, graduates of the great Commonwealth Air Training Plan. Twenty-five thousand people are here to see relatives, friends, brothers, sons become full-fledged flyers. Each bomber crew receives its wings as a fighting unit. Five men, pilot, navigator, gunner, wirelessman, and bombardier, trained as a team. Heroes of air battles with the German Luftwaffe are guests of honor. Air Minister Power making the presentation of wings. Past the reviewing stand, all branches of Canada's armed forces march in stirring salute to their new comrades in arms. Tribute from the Dominion to the gallant young men of the RCAF. American industry solves the housing problem in war factory areas with ready-made or prefabricated homes. Windows are insulated, and with assembly line technique, the walls spring up like magic, all painted and ready for use. In truckloads of two or three houses, they're rushed wherever needed. One, two, and three bedroom homes can be set up in 80 minutes. There goes the roof, and here's the finished product. Kitchens are modern and equipped with the latest appliances. From bedroom to living room, it's a model home. Where war workers need housing, whole communities like this spring up overnight. British sailors in Virginia, while their ship is being refitted, spend shore leave helping nearby farmers harvest their crops. Back to the soil after months at sea is a real holiday. For English farm boys, raking hay and gathering corn seems just like home. They accept no pay, but the American farmers give them the time of their lives, all the beer and food they can hold. Geologists tapping the mineral-rich region of northeastern Alberta, Canada, develop a 10,000 square mile range of oil sands. Sands so filled with oil that engineers predict a potential yield of 250 billion barrels. Dynamiters blasts barely 20 feet beneath the surface. Like mining coal above the surface, steam shovels pick up huge chunks of the rich deposit for processing at a nearby plant. Steaming hot water separates the globules of oil from each tiny particle of sand. The oil rises to the top, the sand goes to the bottom. 300 barrels of oil from 400 tons of sand, and they've just tapped the surface. United States sailors swing down New York's Fifth Avenue as the nation celebrates Navy Day. A day in honor of America's famous fighting president, the late Theodore Roosevelt. Men of the Army paid tribute to the men in blue, as all America salutes the fleet that's now in action on the seven seas. Red Cross nurses. Units of the British Navy passing in review. Today, the nation's battle cry is the Navy, first line of attack. The world's 
largest auto bus, built to carry 117 passengers with speed and safety. Turning corners, it's so long the upper deck swings away from the lower. For transporting workers to war plants, the giant bus carries a load equal to 23 automobiles, an important saving in gasoline and tires. Convoys of troops and equipment steaming full speed through the South Pacific. Latest newsreel pictures of America's battle for her hard-won bases in the Solomon Islands. An American scout plane crashes into the sea. Boats speed to the rescue, and the pilot is brought safely ashore. Now, destroyers come up to cover troop landings, and the Marines go in under the guns of the Navy. Swarming across the beach, they come to reinforce comrades who landed in the first attacks. United States forces made the Japs pay heavily every foot of the way. Here is grim, mute evidence of the price they paid. Bodies of enemy dead, awaiting burial in the palms among which they fell. Fresh supplies and ammunition to strengthen the defending garrison are moved in captured Jap trucks. Captured Jap machine guns and field pieces are tested. A Japanese flamethrower left behind is tried out by a Marine. Japanese equipment used in building a vitally important airfield now repairs it for American use. Well-fed and well-treated Japanese prisoners willingly work. In contrast to widely spread Japanese propaganda, they seem to be talking quite freely. The men, dejected, weary, apparently are much in need of a bath. Japanese planes, leading desperate counterattacks, drop incendiaries on the airfield. Anything to keep the Americans from using it. Calmly, efficiently, ground crews remove gasoline and planes from the danger zone. Speedily, the field is repaired, the runways kept open, and United States carrier-based planes arrive to take up the fight for mastery of the air. Fighters that have downed more than 400 Jap planes in this one area alone. <laughs> 